TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live. But if we ever do go live and you miss it, this is the channel where you can catch it at. All the highlights and things of that nature. Um, until then, just leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, don't forget, we do got the Patreon. It's busting. This will keep the dream alive and the bills paid. You feel me? Uh, Discord. Also, send your requests there. Now, Vice. It's how social media uh, mythologizes gang lifestyle. Okay. First, so what, before social media, what mythologized did it then? What, what, what did it before social media? Because I know on, in the rack, this has always been a thing. You know what I'm saying? Poverty. Poverty, police brutality, police not a, policing the community, helping the communities. That's why gangs were started. Now, where did they steer wrong and... Now you got these old, these new people, get these new kids out here. Everybody's EBK and this and that and things of that nature and no respect and no, you know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is now, but initially, let's not forget the, the, the history of it all. It's been here. Anyway, let's get into it, man. Social media just just lets the suburban kids in. <laughs> that's 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 social media lets the suburbanites see what's going on. It's the window to some sh that's already been going on. And let's keep it a buck. Real gang sh is not televised. You will never see it. <laughs> Did a dangerous gang strike again? It is a Dominican gang. The NYPD has been watching and fighting for years. In the heat wave of June 2018, teenage machete gangs ran riot on the streets of New York City. After eight stabbings and two shootings in- I will say something about this though. New York, when they come to gangbanging, it's a different type of gangbanging out there. Because it's really like the wild, wild west because like, you got to think about it. Guns are illegal. So, you know, you carrying a pipe out there, you really, you know, you really got to be into it with somebody to carry a pipe and risk that, risk that, how long? 15 year sentence, 10 year sentence? And they really giving it up like the UK, they really a poke you out there. In just four still based stuff off colors, they like, it's wild out there. 15 days in the Bronx, some in broad daylight, the summer of violence reached its crescendo with the brutal murder of 15-year-old Lissandro Guzman Feliz. It took at least 10 seconds to pull Junior away from the back counter, the panicked teen knocking over a potato chip stand as he struggled to stay inside. CCTV and smartphone footage of the attack quickly went viral. I remember this. New York was rattled. Gang violence had always been present, but rarely so pervasive. Social media meant the murder rang through the digital street as well as the real one. Trinitario. It rang through the digital street as well as the real one. This idea of the digital street is essentially a traditional street life transformed into the new neighborhood, the new community in which people are also living as well, which is social media. The perpetrators of this attack? A youth set of the Trinitarios, New York's brutal Dominican street gang that happened to be at war with each other. This is a group that has uh, a propensity to use weapons and, and to be very violent to them. That's their feather and their cap. I'm be a buck with you. I ain't never even heard of that gang. See, I got homies in New York. That's why I don't even be going to New York. I'm Gucci. I'm, I'm good. That's sort of their trademark. They not only killed this kid, but they brutally killed him. We are alarmed by the use of social media to really over-proliferate this violence in our communities. This is the business of crime. And in this episode, we're exploring how social media has completely transformed the way gangs operate and turned a new generation of teenage Trinitarios against each other. Half the episode done. Uh... 
Lisandro Guzman Feliz, or Junior as he was known, was no gang member. He dreamed of becoming an NYPD detective since the age of five and was even enrolled in a trainee police program. Now his face stares down from murals painted on walls across his old neighborhood in the Bronx. So how did he end up dead? Junior's. I, I never even really paid attention to the story because it's not, you know, I really don't pay attention to no, the news is so filled with death, tragedy, and disaster. It's like, I don't even be, be watching the news like that. Um, yes, I've seen it on social media, but I don't know what they just called it, social media street. I'm not in no streets. I was outside in Chicago, so it was like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> I got other things to worry about, but R.I.P. 15 accused killers introduced to the public, captured on surveillance, bolting into the... This is what I'm talking about, like New York. There's 15 accused killers introduced... Bro, broad, <laughs> naked face. He ain't got no... ...introduced to the public, captured on surveillance, bolting into the bodega, demanding the release of the terrified Junior from behind the store counter. Junior was just categorized as being somebody who has been seen in these communities, hanging out with some of these kids that are involved in this lifestyle. Unfortunately, mistaken identity ended a promise in life. The CCTV and smartphone video footage is hard to watch. Junior tries to hide behind the counter of a local bodega, but the owner doesn't realize what's going on till it's too late. The gang drag Junior from the store and repeatedly stab him on the pavement. The gang has come a long way from where they started. After being established by two Dominican prisoners in the early 90s, the Trinitarios quickly for mm, early 90s. Okay, that's a newer forged a rep for street-level brutality. The FBI say that they are the most rapidly expanding Caribbean gang in America. In 2009, the NYPD launched a huge clampdown on the activity of the Trinitarios. A lot of the old guard is no longer, uh, whether they are in prison or dead. By the time Junior was murdered in 2018, most of the gang's top brass were in prison. A leadership vacuum emerged as a result and rival sets within the gang had begun warring amongst themselves. Those found guilty of murdering Junior came from one- Look at bro. In the deepest of tears. One of the many subsets that were attempting to gain control, Los Chures. Gangs like the ring bells, as we say. Gangs like to let people know that they are a violent group that is not afraid to use weapons, not afraid to use machetes, not afraid to take it to the, the extreme to make their point and to have other people respect them and know that they're around. This surveillance video shows those innocent people running for cover. They are caught in the middle of a gang war. Many of the defendants regularly posted social media photographs. This is the same gang responsible for the 2018 killing of Alessandro Jr. Guzman Feliz. Many believe this rampant infighting was inflamed by social media. The way in which we understand gangs today uh, is no longer. These large hierarchical structures have been disrupted. And so what we see today are younger individuals that are really embedded in crews and cliques that are very much... So ain't no real, you know, there's a there's a big gang and there's a lot of umbrella factions within those gangs. But here's the thing about Chicago, you could be in this gang and you could have homies in another gang, opposite side, but y'all all grew up in the same area, so y'all are cliques. It doesn't even matter anymore where you from. Like it doesn't matter. Like it's crazy. Yeah, man, it's neighborhood and block based and there's no loyalty to no one you don't know who's who it's ebk anybody could get it it's up and stuck these are also young people who spend an enormous amount of time on social media the videos show young men in masks dancing on fire escapes and me personally i don't condone none of that matter of fact you too Let's get back into it. I'm just, you know, saying. Stoops and dimly lit back streets to drill music. Flanked by friends in gang colors, they show off cash and mime shooting guns down the lens of a smartphone. We're seeing people who are looking for connection. We're seeing people that are looking for community. Couple that with this idea that you can find community, you can feel like a human being because if you can engage and have lots of followers and can promote music and promote your art, 
that that can make you feel better. You can have a better experience. These posts mythologize the gang lifestyle as one that can bring status, wealth, girls, and excitement. The comments overflow with lime green gun and heart emojis, which match the colors the Trinitarios have worn for decades. The internet has meant the whole landscape has changed. It's astronomical. I mean, just the recruitment, you know, just the, the flamboyancy of these groups, the way they make it look so And the thing about it nowadays is, like, there really is no recruitment. Get, I get what they're saying when they come about this mythologizes, but, but I'm saying, like, somebody out in Bumble, in Bumble, could see a New York or a Chicago or, or any or any like big city gang and decide like I like how they doing I like how them I'm from the, I'm that now like there's no process there's nothing like you you now they see it they is it it's really sexy to to younger individuals so it's being used in recruitment it's being used in intimidation the game is viral. The game is to a point where you can be in one state disrespecting another group in another state. Um, you could be in one country disrespecting a group in another country. So just the vast you know, way that you can get things out there to the masses these days in social media, gangs have embraced that. And the new generation of street gangs have increasingly used social media to humiliate their sworn enemies. The NYPD say Junior may have been targeted because he was wrongly identified as a guy who appeared in one of these videos wrapping into a smartphone camera in the foreground. Using social media as a weapon isn't unique to New York. Organized crime elsewhere uses similar tactics to recruit, target and punish. The Italian Camorra, one of the deadliest organizations in the world, uses the internet to recruit and use children as part of new gangs that have changed the face of their criminal operation. <laughs> I social media are very important in the crescita del ragazzo e la per entrare in un grande comunità. Experts say social media is breeding a kind of envy that pushes people to join street gangs. It's becoming an epidemic, to be honest with you. And I'll meet with the gang members and I ask them, you know, how did this come about? You know, nine out of ten times they say it was a social media platform that was used to disrespect us or we disrespected them. And you know, it all happened with the use of these phones. In the end though, it's a double-edged sword. I feel like this this right here is another way to to to, to attack drill music or to tr attack rap music. It just feels like they, they like without saying it, they're attacking rap music. <laughs> like the very tool that these gangs are using is allowing police to track their movements. More and more turf wars invite and factional disputes starting online and bleeding onto the streets are allowing cops to put more gang members in jail. If you YouTube some of their videos, you can see that they call people out directly. There's a saying, the streets will never forget. But if that's true, the internet has an even longer memory because the things you post have a habit of sticking around. Fleeting moments of bravado may lead to spending far longer behind bars. With all of this negativity, except if you put one of these on there, then you good. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Um, I'm gone. <laughs>